if ever was a time to rail against the regulatory state and its consequences, now is the time. Now look, for example, okay, so we got the vaccine. Now let's talk about distribution. Government has basically made it illegal for you and me to buy a vaccine. Only the government is allowed to buy the vaccine. Only the government is allowed to distribute the vaccine. Only the government is allowed to determine who gets the vaccine. So we have a bunch of medical ethicists sitting in a room making lists of who to prioritize over whom. By what standard, you might ask? Well, it's kind of obvious. It's not even a utilitarian standard. It's not even some pretense at stopping the virus standard. The standard is unequivocally, undeniably altruism. Need is the standard. Need of individuals, not even taking into account the fact that they're vaccinating all the wrong people. If they want to stop this, if they want to save lives. So yes, I get medical workers. Makes complete sense and in a free market, who would have the highest incentive to buy large quantities of vaccines and vaccinate their employees? Well, hospitals, because they rely on those employees to keep the hospital functioning, to keep it making money, to keep it making treating its customers. And they're the most susceptible because they have to deal with the disease on a day-to-day -day basis. So the first people that would be vaccinated because they would bid the price up the highest in a free market would be health workers because hospitals would buy it. But then who would come next? Is it true that the most urgent population to get vaccinated are Old people. Is it true that old people are the ones who get vaccinated? Probably not. Old people have a way of not getting the virus. Isolation. They can self-isolate. And thus shield themselves, at least to a large extent, from getting the virus. Who do the old people usually get it? From? Well, from people they interact with, whether it's people at the grocery store, whether it's people who work in their homes, or whether it's people they socialize, usually younger people. I mean, if you just wanted to suppress the virus, the group that should get the vaccine are what we call super spreaders. People who go out at night, people who go to bars, people who interact, people who mingle, people who work in old age, uh, in, 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 you know, in, in various homes of older people, people who uh, work in facilities where older people are, those are the people who should be vaccinated first. And of course, uh, you know, those, those homes and those facilities, again, have a huge incentive to buy vaccines, primarily to vaccinate their staff. Little kids, there's no, as far as I know, there's no strong evidence that little kids transmit the virus very well. It seems the virus has very low loads in little kids. So it's not little kids. What you want is the people who spread this tend to be younger. They tend to be active. Who else has a strong incentive to buy a vaccine and to pay a lot for the vaccine? Well, people who go to work. Companies who need workers to be at work. So for example, grocery store workers, no matter what age they are, the grocery store chains have a strong incentive to buy the vaccine to vaccinate their workers. Amazon has a strong incentive to buy the vaccine to vaccinate its workers. In other words, the marketplace would actually allocate the vaccine to the people who most, that it's most important to get it. Those who can keep our economy going, those who keep what the market believes are essential services going, like hospitals and grocery stores, and, and those who are most likely to spread it because they travel or because they interact, 
and only then. And then if they, if their viral load is now lower, if they are less likely to get it, if the super spreaders are not spreading it anymore because they're vaccinated, then you've got a much smaller problem on your hands. You've got a much less of an issue. And then you can start vaccinating other people. By the, but by the time you get there, by the time you get to the elderly, uh, infections are way down and deaths are way down. And also note that what does the, what does the price mechanism do? Well, it increases supply. The government basically has a fixed cost at which it buys these. If it wants more, is it going to pay more? Well, that's not how government officials think. Why would we pay more? But a market system that lets price fluctuate would provide strong incentive to suppliers to create more vaccines. Now, it's complicated to make vaccines. I realize that. But imagine how complicated it is today when price is capped by government versus much more profitable. Imagine transportation and storage done by the government today versus FedEx, UPS, Walmart, CVS in a free market. Who do you think will distribute it better? And then, I, you know, these are some of the things I read yesterday. So in New York State, I mean the model of bureaucratic inefficiency. In New York State, to give a vaccine requires between 20 to 60 minutes of filling out forms. Every shot in the arm takes an hour. Not because the shot takes an hour, that takes less than 30 seconds. But because the forms take between 20 minutes to 60 minutes to fill out. Why do you need forms? Why can't I buy the vaccine on Amazon Prime and self-inject it? There are these uh, uh, syringes that make it quite easy to self-inject yourself. Why can't I buy it that way? Why can't it be shipped in dry ice to me in my home and for me to inject it? I, I, the free market would come up with solutions like that. No, because you have to fill out forms. You have to talk to a nurse. Only authorized personnel can actually give you an injection. They have to be certified. They have to have a license. They have to go through government permissioning. So then what happens? What happens is, even though there's urgency about giving these, uh, uh, these uh, vaccines, what happens in New York State is that they vaccinate the people on their list, and then they have some vaccines left. And they can't get more people to come in to vaccinate them. So what do they do, do you think, with the vaccines? Because they they're only allowed to vaccinate healthcare workers and people over 65, let's say. I'm not sure what the standards are exactly in New York. And they have some vaccines left, so what are they supposed to do with them? Because they've got a form. And by the way, massive fines in New York if you vaccinate somebody not on the list, if you vaccinate somebody out of order, huge fines. What happens to the vaccine? If there's leftover and they don't have anybody who's over 65 or health worker. They throw it out. They trash it. Now, remember, we're short on vaccines. There's an urgency to get more and more vaccines out there, to get more and more people vaccinated. And the state of New York and many other states are throwing it out because it, it doesn't meet the standards. They're not, you know, they're not on the list. You know what they do in Israel? This is the Israeli method, right? The Israeli method is you go out into the street and you say, hey, we've got some extra vaccines. Anybody want to get vaccinated? Come on. Come on. Anybody. Come on in. That's how Israel is way ahead of the rest of the world in terms of vaccination. I mean, it's logistics are better. It's better organized. But in Israel, they don't throw out vaccines. If there's more vaccines at the end of the day, they find people. They call up their relatives. They find people off the street. They bring them in and they get vaccinated. Because in spite of Israel being more socialist than America, they're less rigid and bureaucratic and stupid about these things because this is just stupid. 
And if you happen to be 18 years old and you get vaccinated, hey, it's better an 18-year-old get vaccinated than we trash it. But no, in New York State, it's better to trash the vaccine than give it to an 18-year-old because Como, God, ordered it thus. Now, Israel's not the model for this. I bet you it could be done a thousand times better than Israel's doing it. But whereas the United States is doing about 5.3 vaccines per 100 people right now, right? Israel has it to 38.83. So Israel is almost eight times more effective at distributing vaccines than the United States. And part of it is because they're not worrying about the the order as much. They're not, they're willing to, to, to shoot from the hip. They're willing to figure it out as it goes along. They're not going to follow some bureaucratic, ridiculous dictates from above on the order at which, I mean, you should be so pissed off about this. You should be so angry. I mean, Again, just the distribution of the vaccines, a proof, proof in front of our eyes of the inefficiency, the immorality of government, of regulatory agencies, of central planning, of the whole array of status policies. I mean, you guys should be furious particularly when you've got somebody who you love who has the disease. And they don't have to have it. They don't need to have it at this point. Because by now, it should be over. It would have been over if we'd let the market work. But we're much, we're willing to sacrifice, and this is, this is altruism, right? We're willing to sacrifice hundreds of thousands of people so we we not question our altruism. We're willing to sacrifice hundreds of thousands of people not to question the role of government. We're willing to sacrifice hundreds of thousands of people just not to rely on markets, rely on self-interest, and allow our morality to be questioned. So, I mean, thank you, John. It's Mind-boggling, <laughs> mind-boggling, is uh, is is the uh, is the term. What we need today, what I call the new intellectual, would be any man or woman who is willing to think, meaning any man or woman who knows that man's life must be guided by reason, by the intellect, not by feelings, wishes, whims, or mystic revelations. Any man or woman who values his life and who does not give, want to give in to today's cult of despair, cynicism, and impotence, and does not intend to give up the world to the dark ages and to the rule of the collectivist brutes. All right, before we go on, reminder, please like the show. We, we've got 163 live listeners right now, uh, 30 likes that should be at least 100. I figure at least 100 of you actually like the show. Maybe there are like 60 of the Matthews out there who hate it. But, but at least the people who are liking it, you know, I want to see I want to see a thumbs up. There you go. Start liking it. I want to see that go to 100. All it takes is a click of a, a, click of a, a thing, whether you're looking at this. Uh, and, and, you know, the likes matter. It, it's not an issue of my ego. It's an issue of the algorithm. The more you like something the more the algorithm likes it. So, you know, and if you don't like the show, give it a thumbs down. Let's see your actual views being reflected in the likes. But uh, if you like it, don't just sit there, help get the show promoted. Of course, you should also share, and uh, you can support the show at yourownbookshow.com slash support or on Patreon or Subscribestar or Locals. Uh, and uh, and show your support for all for, for for the work for the value hopefully you're receiving from this, and uh, and of course don't forget if you're not a subscriber even if you even if you just come here to troll or even if you're here like Matthew to defend Marx, 
then uh, you should subscribe because that way you'll know when to show up. You'll know what shows are on, when they're on. You'll get notified. Right? So, um, yes, like, share, subscribe, support. Like, share, subscribe, support. There you go. Easy. Do one or all of those, please.